Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about lists. Lists allow us to store multiple values in a single variable. For example, imagine you've got a program that contains the names of your friends. You could start off with something like this. But of course, you can imagine that as your program grows, this becomes less and less feasible. You have to keep adding variables, and not only that, but working with these variables becomes increasingly difficult. For example, if you wanted to print out who your friends are, you would have to say, you know, print friend one, and then you have to print friend two, and then print three, and if you add more, you would have to add more print statements. And that means that as your code grows, it grows more and more and more exponentially. And that means that this code is not going to be very easy to work with. It's much better if we create a list. Like this. Now we've got a single variable, friends, and that name describes very well what it contains, which is the names of our friends. To create a list, we use square brackets, and inside the list, we put the different values separated by commas. So what we've got here is a list of three strings. The first one is Rolf, the second one is Bob, and the third one's Anne. If we want to access the value of a single friend, you would do friends, and then using square brackets again, you would put zero, for example. And what this does is it accesses the first element of the list. Notice that in computing, we start counting at zero. So element zero is the first element, element one is the second element, and so on. So if we run this, you'll see that Rolf gets printed out because that's the first element there. Similarly, if we print friends one, you'll see Bob printed out. Notice that you can put anything you want inside a list, so you could put two in there if you wanted to, but this is highly discouraged. Generally, you want to keep data inside a list homogeneous, and what this means is you wanna keep it all related and all the same. For example, here if you've got a list called friends, you probably wanna keep your friends in that list. If you have a list called furniture, you would wanna keep strings describing the furniture in that list. If you see something like this out there in some code that you read somewhere else, it probably means that the programmer in question started writing some code about furniture and then decided to write about friends instead. And generally when you do this, you want to make sure that your variables do change. While you can do this, it's generally discouraged because the data inside the list is no longer described by the variable name. And so this can be a bit confusing. If you see a variable called friends, what's the two? Does that mean you have two friends? Is it something else? Maybe one of your friends is called two? So keep the data inside your lists homogeneous, and that's gonna make your life much easier as you program more. Of course, if you did want to get the amount of elements in the list, say two, you don't have to put the two inside the list you can just print the len of friends. So if you do len and then inside the brackets, you put the list, this is gonna give you the length of the list or the size of it. So if we run this, you'll get two out because that's the number of elements in this list, Rolf and Anne. You can put anything you want inside a list. So it doesn't have to be strings or numbers. You can put other lists if you want. For example, let's create a list of friends and their ages. So here this outer list denoted by these square brackets outside of every other element has three lists inside it. This one, that one, and this one. Each of those lists has two elements inside it. Those two in this list, Bob and 30 in this list, and Anne and 27 in the final list. If you wanted to access a specific element, for example, Rolf, all you have to do is access the first element of the outer list, and that is friends zero, and then the first element of the inner list. So when you do friends zero, what you're getting back is this list here. What happens in Python is that this is replaced essentially by this list. So now if you wanna access the first element of this list, you just put another zero inside square brackets at the end. So this here is this list, and all of this is 
Rolf. Similarly, if you wanted to access Bob's age, for example, you could do friends one, one. When you have a long list such as this one, it's usually good form to split it out into multiple lines like this, the square brackets in their own lines, and then with some spacing in front, although it is not required, but it is generally used, you can put each of the sublists in there. Indeed, if it's a list of strings, say, you can also put each string in their own line, just so it's a bit easier to read. This clearly shows that you've got a long list, and this is each element in the list, and you can see they're comma separated at the end. Do pay close attention when you are writing lists that you have the commas in the right place. Here we've got a comma inside this inner list, which means it's got two elements. And then we've got a comma afterwards, which separates this element from other elements in the outer list. Just something to pay close attention to. Let's go back to our friends list with just strings and look at how to add to one of these. To add to a list, all you have to do is type the list name, dot append. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a name or indeed add anything to the list at the end. That's what append means. So if we print friends now, you'll see that we've got four elements inside the friends list. Similarly, you can remove from a list if you want by doing friends.remove and then say Bob. Now, if we print this, you'll see that it's only got two elements, Rolf and Anne. Something to remember is that if you have a list of lists, for example, and you want to remove one of these sublists, you've got to say friends.remove and then everything you want to remove. So that's Anne, say, 27. And what this means is you're going to remove from the friends list, which is all of this, the value of this list. So this entire list is going to go away. If you just do Anne, Python is going to say Anne doesn't exist in this list because this list contains three things. This, that, and that. And Anne is not one of those things. What is one of those things, though, is this entire list. Anne with 27 in it. So if we print friends now, you'll see that that entirely disappears and you're left with just the two other lists inside your friends list. Hopefully this makes sense. Lists are a very useful data structure and they're everywhere in Python and you're going to be using them a lot throughout your programming. If you're not sure when you would want to use a list versus a string, don't worry too much about it. Over the coming videos, we're going to be getting more experience with using lists as well as some other data structures that we'll be looking at. And you will learn more about when and how to use them. So we in this video, we're going to talk about tuples. Tuples are very similar to lists in that they are used to store multiple pieces of information. But there is a small, subtle difference between tuples and lists. Let's jump right in. A tuple can be defined like this. Let's imagine you've got a short tuple that contains two of your friend names. You can just say Rolf, comma, Bob. Notice that there are no square brackets now around these two strings, but there is a comma in between them. So you've got one string and then another string. This is a tuple. You can think of it as almost the same thing as a list, but I'll show you the difference in just a moment. It's often good form to put brackets around this. So this is a bit clearer. If you put brackets around the two strings like that, this is a little bit clearer that it's a tuple. And almost all of the time, you're going to see tuples defined with the brackets around them. But remember that the brackets are not required in many cases, although there are some cases where they will be. And that is when Python cannot be sure if the comma is used to separate two things inside the tuple or something else. For example, here's a, an occasion where you will need to use the brackets, which is when you want to put a tuple inside a list. If you have a list and you want to put a tuple inside it and you do it like this, you have not put a tuple inside the list. What you've done is you've created a list of two elements, as we saw in the last video. If you want to create a list with a tuple inside it, you will need the brackets so that Python knows that you intend this to evaluate first, which creates a tuple, and then the list to evaluate later. That's what brackets are normally used for in mathematics as well, to signal order of evaluation. 
So most of the time you're going to see your tuples defined with brackets around them and I would encourage you to get accustomed to that notation as well. Something very important is that while you can write your tuples like this, this thing is most definitely not a tuple if you just write Rolf. If you write Rolf on its own, that's just a string, right? But if you add Rolf and then a comma, Python knows that you want a tuple there. And this, adding a comma at the end, is something that a lot of my students make as a mistake when they're starting up. They just put a comma at the end because, you know, maybe they come from a different programming language or maybe it's a typo or a small mistake. And this can cause some trouble, so make sure to not put commas at the end of your statements in Python because that turns strings or anything else into tuples, and that can be a bit confusing. So I've got this tuple here with my friend names, Rolf, Bob, and Anne, and let's say I want to add something to this tuple. Like we learned with lists, friends.append, and then gen. So if we run this now, you'll see that we'll get an error. And it says, attribute error, this is the name of the error, tuple object has no attribute append. And here it tells you the line in which the error occurred, which is line two of our code. What this means is that you can't do dot append on a tuple. Okay, so how do you add to a tuple if you can't append to it? Well, that's the thing. You cannot add to a tuple. Here we've got a tuple of three elements, and you cannot insert an extra element on this tuple. All you can do is say friends equal friends plus gen, like that. So you can add two tuples together, in this case, the friends tuple and the gen tuple with a single element, add those two and say that friends is now equal to the result of adding them. Remember, when you do an equal sign, the right side evaluates first. So this thing here uses the current value of friends and this new tuple, and then you give it the name friends. So you can reassign while using a variable in the assignment. That's totally fine. It just uses the last value of the variable if it existed. You can do this if you want, and that will result in a tuple of four elements. But what's important and an important distinction is that the tuple itself did not change. You created a new one, which contains now four elements. And while that's relatively unimportant right now, it will become important as you learn more Python. So that is the key difference between lists and tuples. Lists, you can add and remove elements. Tuples, you cannot. So that's the key difference. Tuples are useful for when you want to keep them unchanged. Most of the time, I'd recommend using tuples over lists and only use lists when you specifically want to allow modification or changes. Again, at the moment, this may not make much sense, but you will find more meaning in that as you learn more. Trust me on that one. That's everything for this video, though. We've learned about tuples. I'll see you on the next one.